Okay, I'm back, and now we want to talk about why does the Earth have different layers. So originally, when the Earth formed, it was a uniform ball of materials that contained iron and silicon and oxygen, and all of these other elements were uniformly distributed inside the Earth. So why is it that the Earth has different layers today? And that is going to be because of density. So this process of uh, the planet creating different layers is going to be called differentiation. And so the heavier materials went to the center of the planet, and likewise the lighter materials that were inside the Earth floated up to the surface. So to give you an idea what I mean by this, imagine, um, uh, have you ever seen uh, them uh, like at uh, Silver Dollar City or someplace where they have molten iron and then they pour it into the mold and then the stuff floats up to the surface and then they, they scrape it off uh, to, to get to the pure metal. So that stuff that they're scraping off is called dross and what that represents is the less dense materials that were in the iron floated up to the surface. So similarly, inside the earth, the heavier material, such as iron, went to the core, and then the lighter material went to the surface, and then that's what formed the crust of the earth. So you can think of the crust of the earth as being like the, the scum of the earth. It was the stuff that floated up to the stuff, up to the top like the dross. So what are we left with? So the Earth has basically three different layers. So you can think of the Earth as having a, uh, a core composed of iron and nickel, two very dense materials, metals. Then surrounding that is going to be a material that is less dense than iron and nickel, made of rock, which we're going to call the mantle. And then surrounding that is going to be the lightest materials that float on the surface of this. And then that's going to be called the crust. So the crust is composed of less dense rocks. The mantle is composed of more dense rocks. And then the core is composed of iron and nickel metal, which is very dense. If you want to, to do this, uh, to, to see how things separate because of density, you can do it with some uh, Italian dressing. So get some Italian dressing that has uh, tomatoes and, and uh, bacon and oil and water and shake it up and then put it on the counter and see what happens. You notice that the tomatoes and the bacon and all those more dense materials go to the bottom, and then you've got the water in between, and then on the very top, you've got the oil. So very similarly, the material separated inside the earth. So what are we left with? Well, if you were born in the, the 1960s, your geology class was pretty boring because what we knew about the inside of the earth was that it had a iron nickel core and we surmised that by knowing that asteroids had lots of iron and nickel in them and we know that the earth is composed of millions of asteroids that collided with it and then we also know that the earth has a magnetic field and iron is makes a very good magnet so we knew that the core was composed of iron and nickel, and then we knew that the crust was composed of rocks, so we surmised that underneath it would be the mantle, which would be composed of more dense rocks. Okay, then along comes the Cold War between the United States and Russia. And one of the things that we needed to know was uh, how big were their nuclear weapons. And the way that we would do it was we would measure the earthquake waves generated 
by those explosions. And so we covered the surface of the Earth in seismic meters that would be able to detect the miniature earthquakes uh, released when one of these bombs would go off. And just like in, let's say, World War II, you could use sonar to detect a submarine. So a, a, a ship would give off radio waves, sonar, it would bounce off the submarine and then go up to the surface and we would know how deep the submarine was. So similarly, we use the, rate of the earthquake waves to map the depths of the different layers of the inside of the Earth. And what we found was that the core actually was, there were two cores. You had the inner core, which is solid, and then you got the outer core, which is liquid, and then they also found out that there was another layer underneath the, the crust uh, and a, a more plastic layer that was kind of slippery. It wasn't quite solid and it wasn't quite liquid. So that's going to be called the asthenosphere. And then underneath that was the part that we normally think of as the mantle but it's the mesosphere. So everything in, on the left-hand side of that picture represents the composition of the inside of the Earth. What kind of rocks are, is it composed of? Whereas everything on the right-hand side of that picture represent is it a solid, is it a liquid, or is it something in between? So the mesosphere is going to be solid but yet it can flow. Now how can it do that? So how can the mesosphere be flowing, but yet if you were to look at it, you would swear it's a rock? Well, it's flowing on an atomic level so that every day maybe one atom shifts its position and goes up a little bit because it's convecting, it's going up and then it's going back down. So atom by atom in the mesosphere, there are atoms that are shifting every day and they are going up. You know, if you were to look at it, you'd say it's a solid, but if you, look, if you had a motion picture of it and you looked at it over millions of years, then you would actually be able to see the rocks flowing like a liquid. So one example of this is, uh, for example, in uh, Europe, if you look at the stained glass windows, they're a little bit thicker at the bottom than the, what they are at the top. And that's because in the thousands of years since those cathedrals have been built, the glass has been slowly flowing down because of gravity. If you were to look at it, you would swear it's solid. If you were to touch it, it's solid. But over millions of years or thousands of years, it's actually flowing like a liquid. Uh, wax does the same thing. So that uh, given enough time, uh, a candle will get fatter at the bottom because of the effects of gravity. All right, so we got the inner core solid. Oh, and that poses another problem. Why is the inner core solid? Because you know that when you heat something up, what does it turn into? It turns into a liquid. And we know that the deeper you go inside the earth, the hotter it gets. So why is it that the inner core is a solid? Temperature wants to make it a liquid. So is there something that could be stronger than the effects of temperature? Yes. What do you think it is? Pressure. So the deeper you go inside the earth, the greater the pressure gets. So that the temperature is saying, I want the inner core to be a liquid, but the pressure is saying, oh no you don't, you're going to be a solid. In the outer core, what do you think is winning? The temperature or the pressure? Okay, it's going to be the temperature because the outer core is a liquid. 
What do you think in the mesosphere? Pressure is winning because it's not a liquid, but it is flowing very, very slowly. What about the asthenosphere? Who's winning? Well, it's not a solid and it's not a liquid in the asthenosphere. It's a plastic, meaning that it flows, but it's not quite solid, it's not quite liquid. So that means that it's kind of like a tie between the temperature and the pressure in the asthenosphere. And then above that is the solid lithosphere. And so what do you think is winning there? Well, now the pressure is winning again. So it's not hot enough to, to be able to turn the lithosphere into a liquid up there. So kind of interesting. All right, in our next lesson, or our next segment, we're going to talk about the ocean floor and then introduce that to the concept of plate tectonics. I'll see you in just a moment.